I feel like every season there's that one MLB team that gets swept under the rug and honestly doesn't get talked about until late, probably July or something, when they're actually competing for the playoffs. And I think the last couple of years have shown that in fact. Now, the two examples I can think of at the top of my head is the Braves. The Braves had a miracle run to get to the World Series in 2021, and it's one that just will not be forgotten. The Braves worked hard for that championship and honestly deserved that at the end of the day. And the other team I want to talk about in 2022 was the Phillies, actually. And when I say swept under the rug, is that they just weren't a team a lot of people actually expected to make the playoffs and actually shine and become a team that actually made it all the way to the world series i'm sure phillies fans and the phillies themselves were shocked they kind of went on a little run and the reason for this is because hey the phillies weren't playing really well in the months prior to the world series their defense was abysmal their batting was just not there bryce harper was hurt you guys didn't have much besides jt real muto and honestly every once in a while one of your young stars would do something really good the phillies just weren't as good as people wanted them to be and come the playoffs they actually shined and proved doubters wrong made it to the world series the team i want to talk about today is a team that i wish actually made the playoffs and that team is the orioles the Orioles last year had a very small stint where they looked really good. In July, I think they had a winning streak of like 10 and above. They were just a really good ball club that just needed a little bit more to their roster to make them actual contenders. And I think the Orioles last year, a big mistake they made was selling on Jorge Lopez. And honestly, I don't know how good or bad that trade was. Jorge Lopez, yes, kind of, you know, exploded when he went to the Twins. He just didn't do as well. But you guys had a really good closer in your arms and just traded him away. And when you're going on a kind of crazy run and, you know, winning games it sucks to have one of your players that a lot of people liked in the clubhouse get traded away it hurts morale and honestly hurt the Orioles in the long run yes of course professional athletes they don't always bring their emotion onto the field but sometimes people forget these people are human they're gonna miss that guy they're gonna miss their friend their co-worker that they played with but besides that I wish the O's just made that little bit of extra effort and honestly just went all out they were supposed to go all out this off season but they didn't and i think the reason for that is just because of their minor league system their minor league system is really deep and that's kind of what leads to what i want to talk about in this video today i think right now the orioles are honestly the most underrated team in baseball and the reason i say that is because they didn't do anything really big this off season they have the same team but instead of having that same team they're bringing up some prospects and they have some star players that got a little taste of the big leagues recently i think they're gonna have an amazing 2023 season so this this is my kind of bold prediction i don't know if the orioles will actually contend for a wild card position but i think they will definitely be over 500 ball and have a better record than the 2022 season and here's why one of the biggest prospects in baseball is coming up to pitch for their team come the 2023 season and i'm talking about grayson rodriguez this is a guy that has insane stuff he's going to be the future of that orioles squad and say he doesn't do well right you still have a decent orioles pitching rotation honestly the people that i really want to talk about is this projected starting lineup cedric mullins first of all had a decent season last year right in his standards he probably had an off season but honestly next season with the new mlb rules he's gonna be stealing left and right i think he's some guy that can go for 2020 or go for a 30 30 type of season cedric mullins when he's good he's amazing in that streak that they had in july cedric mullins was a really big reason why they won so many games i think cedric mullins is a great player in general and that leads me to my next player Adley Rutschman? Hold up. This guy is a rookie, guys. He was runner-up to Julio Rodriguez, of course, and honestly, Julio deserved that Rookie of the Year award, but don't discredit him for what he did. He only played around 116 or 19 games or something like that and had a really good season. He batted around a 255. He had an OBP of 362, a slug of 445, and an OPS of 806. He also came in 12 in MVP voting. Of course, we all knew Judge was going to win the MVP in the AL, but it's still cool to think about how this kid is playing to his potential. I think Adley Rutschman is a guy that goes for maybe 20 or 30 home runs next season. He's going to have a higher batting average because he's going to be playing more games. Last season, I think he only had around 13 home runs runs and that's really good for your catching position and honestly i think it's really interesting to talk about how adley rutschman is arguably one of the top two catchers in all of baseball jt real muto is obviously the first one and adley rutschman is the second some people argue adley rutschman is actually better than jt real muto i think it's really interesting that you guys have a very young core that can shine and speaking of that young core gunner henderson he's a dude that came up late in the big leagues last year and played i think around 30 or 40 games he didn't play as much but hey He's some guy that can play all over in the infield. Last season, he ended it with a 259 batting average, a 349 OBP, a 440 slug, 788 OPS, and an OPS plus a 123. He had four home runs and 18 RBIs. 
this kid from what he's been in the big leagues he is a masher man i think this kid is going to be some guy that goes for maybe 25 30 home runs honestly it shocked me if he got higher than 30 i think gunnar henderson is just someone that's going to be enjoyable to watch he's a swaggy type of player man he just has that specialness to him that just makes him fun to watch and honestly his defense is not that bad either he had some stints where his defense just looked really good how could you not appreciate those golden locks that's all i'm saying and then your lineup gets a bit deeper right you get to your 250 your 240 batting average people the people that can hit and actually succeed to an extent like these people could hit maybe 260 270 on a good month and i'm talking about you have anthony santander which honestly is apparently in a lot of trade talks with the yankees just because he hits really well at yankee stadium they need a left or right fielder vice versa and you have ryan mountcastle which can do really well like i said he's a young player he has room to grow last year he had a 250 batting average a 305 ovp and a slug of 423 he wasn't a bad player by any means and it's only his like third year in the mlb that's not bad you guys have a young core in baltimore and it's just exciting to talk about these people could blossom into just stars in general i think adley rutschman is going to be an all-star next season i think gunder henderson has the potential to be an all-star next season i think your lineup is really good you have a bunch of young people that can perform and honestly if they could hit for average and just be those contact type of hitters that's fine too look at the guardians look how far they got by being a, kind of a contact team especially in the yankees alds they were just contact monsters i saw it secondhand. i literally watched all the games because i'm a yankees fan if you guys could be something similar to that and maybe have someone like ali rutschman or even gunner henderson hit above maybe 30 homers that is really good for your team and honestly i think the rules next year is going to help this team a lot just because they're going to be making the bases a little bit bigger there's going to be a pitch clock and everything like that and i think stealing is just going to be a big part of the squad next year and honestly i didn't mention the other part of your lineup you still have urias you still have kyle you still have austin hayes you have adam frazier too as well it's going to be really interesting to see how this team actually performs next year i'm ready for it i want the chaos birds to go crazy i want the o's to be competitive in the al east i don't want them to be a sub 500 team and i think you guys agree with me as well if you made it this far one of the only moves the orioles did this offseason is they just traded for cole irvin which happened a couple days ago but besides that you have a decent rotation you have kyle gibson kyle bradish you have dean and you have grayson rodriguez you have these people that can do really well and honestly a lot of them don't have a lot of playing time in the mlb besides kyle gibson which has been in the league for nine years it's going to be really interesting to see how this young core starting rotation actually performs next year and honestly that's it for the pitching staff right you still have a really good bullpen felix bautista and a bunch of those people dylan tate you have a decent amount of bullpen pieces so with that being said if you guys enjoyed this video please leave a like and subscribe it will mean a lot i'm trying to hit a thousand subs before spring training uh and let me know in the comment section down below what type of team should i talk about next and also i have a c key code if you want to use it it's joe talks use that checkout have a great day slash night whenever you're watching this have a good one bye